When considering the existence of dinosaurs, we must first acknowledge that the vast majority of these creatures are without question conceptual inventions rather than scientifically accurate depictions of Earth's inhabitants. These highly skeptical representations are prevalent not only in the captivating illustrations found in textbooks, but also in what can be best described as imaginative artwork in museum exhibits. These artfully crafted depictions of prehistoric life forms primarily serve to promote the evolutionary agenda and reinforce the notion of a history extending back millions of years. Defined by modern science, paleontology is the study of ancient life through the examination of fossils. This field seeks to reconstruct the history, evolution, and environments of extinct organisms by analyzing their remains and traces. As an interdisciplinary field, paleontology combines elements of biology, geology, and chemistry, utilizing techniques such as excavation, laboratory analysis, and comparative anatomy to explore past life and ecosystems. Sir Richard Owen was a prominent British biologist, paleontologist, and comparative anatomist who lived from 1804 to 1892. He is best known for his contributions to paleontology, including coining the term dinosaur, meaning terrible lizard, in 1842 to describe a distinct group of prehistoric reptiles. The initial claim of a dinosaur discovery was made by William Buckland in the early 19th century near Oxford, England. His most notable find consisted merely of a partial lower jaw with teeth and assorted fragments of limb and vertebral bones. Despite the lack of anything approaching a complete skeleton, these sparse and highly incomplete remains were deemed sufficient by Buckland to speculate about the existence of a previously unrecognized giant reptilian creature. He quickly described this creature as Megalosaurus in 1824, marking one of the first purported identifications of what would later be classified as a dinosaur. It is crucial to recognize the extreme scarcity of skeletal remains at the onset of the dinosaur fossil discovery era, and the extent of far-reaching conjecture involved in reconstructing these creatures from mere fragments into fully illustrated life forms. This entire narrative from the outset was quite clearly built on highly speculative and conjectural imagination. Despite the extreme scarcity of fossil finds, the era of dinosaur discovery experienced rapid expansion, with newly described species quickly added to the growing body of known species. However, we must approach with skepticism the immediate assertion that these fossil remains are millions of years old. We have to consider that many of these discovered specimens might actually belong to a far more recent era, or might not represent new species at all given the highly limited fossil evidence supporting such claims. Many of us commonly assume that the detailed depictions and illustrations of dinosaurs that we see in academic books and museum exhibits are based on the discovery of complete skeletal fossil remains, allowing for an accurate depiction in their structure and anatomy. In reality, the opposite is true. These depictions rely on highly incomplete fossil remains, fueling the inherent skepticism that continues to surround the dinosaur narrative from the start. The lack of substantial academic documentation only further fuels skepticism about these alleged findings. Initially, a flurry of discoveries occurred within a short span, and the eagerness to construct these creatures through vivid illustrations not only raises questions, but also strongly suggests an underlying agenda. Consider a scenario in which numerous large crocodiles and their remnants, still found today in Oxfordshire, England, display physical characteristics remarkably similar to those attributed to Megalosaurus and various other supposed dinosaurs, aligning closely with the depiction of giant lizards. We must recognize that fossil remains are typically discovered in a disarticulated state, often highly incomplete and fragmented, resembling merely a few scattered pieces of an extensive puzzle. Could these findings actually represent an extinct genus within the crocodile family, rather than entirely new and distinct species? Further investigation raises a compelling question. 
Could disarticulated crocodile bones be rearranged into a skeletal structure in any chosen posture, mimicking what is currently recognized as a dinosaur when positioned strategically? This possibility certainly exists, both historically and in present times. These bones could even be manipulated into a bipedal arrangement, further reinforcing the traditional depiction of dinosaur anatomy and posture for many of those we commonly recognize today. Consider the typical crocodile skull, which in many ways bears a striking resemblance to those of many alleged dinosaur species. Now imagine this skull as fragmented and highly incomplete, providing ample opportunity for constructing any desired interpretation, which is then depicted in detailed illustrations as a complete skull. We can further acknowledge that different reconstructors inevitably yield different results, clearly illustrating that these attempted reconstructions should not be regarded as accurate to begin with. This highlights that this particular field of paleontology has historically relied heavily on sheer speculation, conjecture, and imagination in its attempt to depict, illustrate, and bring these ancient creatures to life. The existence of dinosaurs was first speculatively hypothesized by a museum head, coincidentally in the mid-19th century during the heyday of evolutionism, before a single dinosaur fossil had ever been found. The mainstream press and media worldwide got to work hyping stories of these supposed long-lost animals, and then, lo and behold, twelve years later in 1854, Ferdinand van de Veer Hayden, during his exploration of the Upper Missouri River, found proof of Owen's theory. A few unidentified teeth he mailed to leading paleontologist Joseph Leedy, who several years later declared them to be from an ancient extinct Trachodon dinosaur, which ironically means rough tooth. Firstly, it should be needless to say that it is impossible to reconstruct an entire hypothetical ancient animal based on a few teeth. But even more importantly, it is dubious that a myriad of ancient reptile, bird, and reptile mammal transitional forms necessary for the blossoming theory of evolution would be hypothesized and then conveniently discovered by teams of evolutionists and archaeologists purposely out looking to find such fossils. And it is even more dubious that such fossils have supposedly existed for millions of years, but were never found by or known to any civilization in the history of humanity until evolutionism's renaissance in the mid-nineteenth century. What motivation, other than a pre-existing agenda, could prompt someone to identify a mere handful of fossils as remnants of an ancient extinct species, and then attempt a reconstruction from such scant remains? These fossils were declared millions of years old, assertions made a century before radiometric dating techniques were in development. Instead, they relied on relative dating methods such as stratigraphy and the use of index fossils. These methods, often criticized for their imprecision and susceptibility to circular reasoning, faced inherent challenges in providing accurate dating estimations, further perpetuating the conjectural narrative surrounding dinosaurs. As an example, we will examine the first illustration of the very popular Tyrannosaurus rex, shown here, published shortly after its discovery in 1905. Looking closer clearly demonstrates the significant conjecture prevalent in the early days of dinosaur research. Initially, scientists relied on highly limited evidence, only parts of the skull, a few jaw fragments, several ribs, scattered vertebrae, and assorted bone fragments. Upon its first discovery, the Tyrannosaurus rex fossils accounted for only an estimated 15% of its entire skeleton, which were used to reconstruct and depict its image. From this scant evidence, reconstructing a complete depiction of the animal and then declaring it a new species required a degree of faith and speculation bordering on the farcical. Most notably, the absence of arms and legs among the discovered fossils raises critical questions about the far-reaching assumption that this creature was bipedal. Interestingly, the minimal changes in the depiction of the Tyrannosaurus rex from its original 1905 illustration up to modern day, despite numerous subsequent fossil discoveries, challenge the likelihood that such speculative interpretations could have been so accurate on the first attempt. 
This scenario underscores the need for caution and critical evaluation in paleontological interpretations, especially when based on such highly incomplete data. Given that the original depictions were based solely on imaginative interpretations of so few fossils discovered, it is surprising how little they have evolved into more accurate representations, despite the continual discovery of alleged new fossils. David Wozni, an American writer, said, Why were there no discoveries by Native Americans in all the years previous when they roamed the American continents? There is no belief in dinosaurs in the Native American religion or tradition. For that matter, why were there no discoveries prior to the 19th century in any part of the world? According to the World Book Encyclopedia, before the 1800s, no one ever knew that dinosaurs ever existed. During the late 1800s and early 1900s, large deposits of dinosaur remains were discovered in western North America, Europe, Asia, and Africa. Dinosaur deposits also lie in Belgium, Mongolia, Tanzania, West Germany, and many other parts of the world. Why has man suddenly made all these discoveries? The land areas of Belgium, Mongolia, Tanzania, western Germany, and the Americas as well were inhabited and very well explored for thousands of years, and there were no discoveries until the 19th century. Why? Wayne Grady, the American journalist, wrote, The period following this, from around 1870 to 1880, became a period in North America where some of the most underhanded shenanigans in the history of science were conducted. In what was known as the Great Dinosaur Rush, or Bone Wars, Edward Drinker Cope of the Academy of Natural Sciences and Othniel Marsh of the Peabody Museum of Natural History began a lifelong rivalry and passion for dinosaur hunting. They started out as friends, but became bitter enemies during a legendary feud involving double-crossing, slander, bribery, theft, spying, and destruction of bones by both parties. Marsh is said to have discovered over 500 different ancient species, including 80 dinosaurs, while Cope discovered 56. Out of the 136 dinosaur species supposedly discovered by the two men, however, only 32 are presently considered valid. The rest have all been proven to be falsifications and fabrications. None of them once claimed to find a complete skeleton either, so all their work involved reconstructions. In fact, to this day, no complete skeleton has ever been found, and so all dinosaurs are reconstructions. Discoveries and excavations most typically seem not to be made by disinterested people, such as farmers, ranchers, hikers, outdoor recreationalists, building construction industry basement excavators, pipeline trench diggers, and mining industry personnel, but rather by people with vested interests, such as paleontologists, scientists, university professors, and museum organization personnel, who were intentionally looking for dinosaur bones, or who have studied dinosaurs previously. Do dinosaur professionals with vested interests have some kind of well-kept secret about knowing where to search that dinosaur amateurs without vested interests are unable to figure out? The finds are often made during special dinosaur bone hunting trips and expeditions by these people to faraway regions already inhabited and explored. This seems highly implausible. More believable is the case of the discovery of the first original Dead Sea Scrolls in 1947, which were unintentionally discovered by a child, and which were all published by 1955. In some cases of discoveries of dinosaur bones by people who do not work in a job related to dinosaurs, it was suggested to them by some dinosaur professional to go look or dig in a certain area. Also very interesting to note are special areas set aside and designated as dinosaur parks for which amateur dinosaur hunters are required to first obtain a dinosaur hunting license. The previous quotes provide an insightful glimpse into the early history of dinosaur hunting and offer a preview of what we can anticipate in the future as new discoveries come to light. While it would be entirely incorrect to deny the existence of extinct species from our past, many of which have been well documented, it is essential to recognize the extremely unreliable and imaginative nature of this particular field of paleontology and its history. A distinct pattern emerges, suggesting that dinosaur discoveries predominantly occur within the realm of vested interests and experts in paleontology. 
This pattern is in stark contrast to the absence of such discoveries before paleontology was recognized as a scientific discipline, and the complete lack of dinosaur evidence in the historical records of ancient civilizations. Furthermore, even in modern times, the rate of new dinosaur discoveries, whether by vested or non-vested parties, remains notably rare, underscoring even more of this truly intriguing pattern. In a critical observation, it is noteworthy that despite claims of over a thousand dinosaur species once inhabiting the Earth, a significant majority of these discoveries occurred within a relatively narrow time frame. Intriguingly, this period coincided with, or suspiciously aligned with, the era when the theory of evolution was fast gaining popularity and acceptance. Despite the momentous advancements in modern excavation technology, and during the most populated period in world history, discoveries of dinosaur fossils have seemingly become increasingly rare. Furthermore, when such fossils are found, they are typically not discovered organically by neutral parties, such as construction crews or site builders, but rather by those directly involved in paleontology. Efforts to access and examine original dinosaur fossils, whether from museum exhibits or custodians claiming to possess them, are systematically denied, regardless of one's affiliation with scientific or paleontological fields. This field of paleontology remains closely guarded, with limited participation resembling more of an exclusive fraternity than an open scientific pursuit. Although I was once captivated by the allure of these creatures, their fascinating illustrations, and the sheer concept of prehistoric life, I have come to a stage where it has become crucial to question the plausibility and veracity of this entire account from its beginning. As I searched deeper into its origins and discovered a vast array of discrediting factors, it became clear that many fraudulent cases and highly speculative artistic interpretations have been employed from the outset to advance this naturalistic, evolution-based agenda. The absence of any third-party analysis and scrutiny surrounding dinosaur remains highlights a stark reality where vested interests exert complete control over and shape the entire dinosaur narrative. We must consider the possibility that the narrative surrounding dinosaurs has been an elaborate deception from the start, one that furthers the theory of evolution and the concept of ancient life forms. It becomes evident that there is a restrictive aspect to this field of paleontology, exclusive to experts, where third-party involvement, critique, and scrutiny are not permitted. This firm exclusivity reveals that only a privileged few within the field are credited with these discoveries, pointing to a clear lack of impartial findings from unaffiliated parties. While these experts may claim their expertise directs them to prime locations for such finds, it is important to consider the ratio of paleontologists to the general working-class population in particular areas where one might certainly expect random dinosaur discoveries. Consider the extensive amount of daily excavation activities undertaken by builders and construction workers worldwide, especially in regions purportedly rich in dinosaur fossils. We find ourselves in the most populated era in world history, equipped with an abundance of massive earth-moving equipment that surpasses anything seen in prior history. Basic calculations reveal a notably skewed ratio, conservatively estimated at 1 in 10 million, between the number of paleontologists and everyday workers who might incidentally discover dinosaur remains. Is it statistically feasible for nearly all discoveries to be made exclusively by this very small group of professionals? This stark contrast highlights that fossil discoveries are almost always credited to paleontologists, who not only unearth these relics, but also assign their allegedly ancient ages. As well, it is these experts who classify the remains as dinosaurs or as new species, almost always relying on highly scant evidence, fueling continual doubts regarding the sufficiency of data underpinning such categorical identifications. While it is true that past species have become extinct and their remains have been uncovered, we must acknowledge that the initial history of dinosaur discovery in particular was entirely conjectural concerning the alleged ancient age and the attempted reconstructions of unearthed fossils. It is also important to consider that no photographs of fossils or remains from this initial period of rapid discovery are available. We only have artistic interpretations, despite the availability of photography at the time. 
all illustrations and representations of these creatures were entirely speculative, given that less than 15% of an alleged dinosaur's remains were typically discovered. Given these considerations, when reflecting on the formative years of the dinosaur discovery era, it becomes imperative to thoroughly scrutinize the credibility of the overall account.